know that another one's going to happen and they're trying to lay out best practices and sometimes the way you get to best practices is to look at worst practices and we saw so many failures. You know, and it's easy to point to the Uvalde ISD, the six officers that made up that department. Um, but there were, like they said, FBI agents that went out there, Border Patrol agents um, They had that are highly trained. You had Texas uh, Rangers, DPS out there. You had a majority, you had, you had people coming in from all different jurisdictions. Of, I don't remember how many, I, I forget now, how many police departments and federal agencies were out there and not a one of them did anything. And I guess that's one of the questions that I have for, uh, for Craig. Um, so Craig, when you listen to this report, I know that you were very frustrated when you saw what happened. Mm -hmm. yes. what, what do you make of, of what they're saying here today? Well, I think they're finally trying to hold people accountable mm -hmm. for, for what they should have done out there. Now there's been other reports DPS has done that, that you know talk about this as well. I think that uh, this is an independent group uh, who's brought together. You know, one of the things for me that I'm, I'm <laughs> just let, let's just go back to, to the, to the people who the, I, the International Association of Chiefs of Police put on the committee to be involved in this. I think it was seven, seven police commanders from different places. I think the individual that was talking there was from Rhode Island, I mm -hmm. believe. It, it was, I would like to have seen someone with school law enforcement uh, have been on that committee. Uh, it, it's, it's, if you've never worked with a principal, if you've never worked with school administration, it is easy to second guess how law enforcement is perceived mm. by school educators mm. because it's, it's maybe not what, what we all think that it is. Mm. Sometimes law enforcement on a school campus really is a square peg in a round hole. Mm. They need us to be at that school. They don't necessarily always want us to mm. be at that school. I think, you know, one of the things that's most important that, that's, that, that comes out of this report is the, the, crit the critical incident, the, the incident command system structure failure that we had here, the catastrophic failure that we had with Pete Arredondo being in charge or was he in charge or who was in charge. Because I think people misunderstand this uh, and, and I'm at the top of the list uh, along with everyone else in law enforcement that recognizes this as a failure. But it's, it's important, I think, for people to understand that law enforcement is a paramilitary organization and we have a structure. And there were large hulking officers included in these 376 people that were outside there that could have barehanded taken the hinges off the door. Mm -hmm. But they... The unlocked door. Yeah. Yes, sir. That oh, they were yeah. waiting to find the keys it, for. It, Just to your point there real quickly, <laughs> you know, we see in this report from the Department of Justice this morning um, that the sheriff there on the scene, as well as the uh, acting chief of the police department, it says they were standing within 10 to 15 feet of each other outside the exterior door However, they were not coordinating with one another and continued to act independently. That's just stunning, considering how many mass shootings we have had and school shootings, more specifically, leading up to the one in Uvalde, that there could be that kind of dysfunction in the response to it. And then the thing we were talking about earlier, where in that 77 minutes of dysfunction and waiting to go in, no one was even setting up over here to talk about triage when we finally get in there to take care of these kids and these teachers. Yeah, and that's really obviously un unacceptable. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, I think 23 agencies, law enforcement agencies responded on that day. And, and, and not everyone was actively involved in what was going on inside the school. Uh, so there, there was ample opportunity for people to assist uh, first paramedics in, in setting a triage area up and being ready. And I understand that you, know, you don't want to rush triage people into the situation where they could be shot because if they're not, if they're not helpful to somebody, it doesn't do anybody any good. Right. But to have set that up outside is different. But I think something that you hit on there is really important, and that is, is you, you perform how you practice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that, that's come out of this through HB3, mm -hmm. uh, where, where we, we've started, we, we, we're just, in my mind, just starting to do some things that, that need to take place, where now counties of a population of more, of less than 350,000 are required to meet with the school, okay? Mm -hmm. 
in my mind, I don't know why we're limiting that to counties of less because of the 264 counties in Texas. I don't know how many actually have less than 350,000 population. I doubt very many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you gotta so, get way out. Yeah. So, yeah. So the thing is, is that you know, if, if you look at large metropolitan areas, and I'll, I'll, you know, Dallas, Dallas Independent School District is in five different cities. You know, Mesquite, Ball Springs, Hutchins. You know, Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do those cities all coordinate and communicate and practice exercises? Because what's the point if you don't? Yeah, yeah and, 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 and how can they talk? You know, I think radio interoperability is going to be one of the things that I'm really interested to hear what they say in this because if you've got 23 agencies outside talking and we know that we've got children who are calling 911 and saying, I'm, I'm injured, I'm in the classroom, there were officers outside that had no idea that those conversations were taking place. And had they known that, they would have, I believe, would have performed differently. Could any officer, I mean, they might have faced <laughs> discipline, simply just taken it into their own hands and gone in and shot the shooter and gone, gone. I mean, any one of those officers standing out there could have done that with, with or without an incident command. Even if they were directed them. to stop, could right. they? Yeah, no, absolutely they could have. It's just, once again, getting back to how we're raised in, in law enforcement. If the chief says, this is what we're doing, I'm just passing the word down, this is what the chief said we're going to do. Yes, in, in hindsight, absolutely, that, that should have taken place. But you had state officers that were there as well, you know, the Department of Public Safety officers that were there. You know, there were, there were this, this is not in a vacuum. There are a lot of people that, that play a role in what took place in this. But it's obvious there's a catastrophic failure on law enforcement's part. We know that. And it's obvious that the, these people want more answers. You'll, if, if any one of us had ever lost a child in a shooting similar to this, we would all want answers. We would be demanding answers the same as they are. What we have to really focus on is, is that, you know, moving forward, how do we do better? How do we learn from this experience? You know, we, 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 Santa Fe was in Texas. You know, what did we do? We did Senate Bill 11, okay? Now we've done HB3. And what is HB3? How far does HB3 go? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and so there, there's a lot of different things we could talk about with yeah. regards to HB3 uh, and, and what they have. You know, this has forced the governor to, to give a stronger role to the Texas Education Association, TEA, and working in conjunction with the Texas School Safety Center. But this still gets back to, in a crisis across the state of Texas, does the chief of police of the city know the phone number to the superintendent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's or have a radio like that speaks to the uh, you know the, the officers there at the school.